Five years ago, I was driving down these roads when I made a very bold claim. I want this car to be the best MX-5 in the country. And after all of these years, multiple setbacks and help from friends, I'm happy to say that I've achieved that. Well, top five anyway. So then let me introduce you guys to Phil, my finished project car, the V6 MX-5. Yep, you heard me right. My Mark 1 MX-5, aka Phil, now features a 3-litre V6 from a Jaguar, plus a whole lot of supporting mods. Let me quickly talk you through those. The first thing that you'll see, Wrench Studios did this lovely respray. Mazda Soul Red, a lovely modern colour. We've also got these fender flares from Carbon Miata. They were all smoothed in, they look lovely. I've got rotor TBT wheels, I've got Falcon tyres. The sills, they were completely redone because they were rotten. They were done by Scuzzle Motorsports. We've also got a hardtop roof because Phil did not come with one of those. And that, let me tell you, has made a whole world of difference. Wrench also did the stripes, the signature stripes that I did in the Eurotunnel many years ago. And at the rear, we've got carbon Miata boot spoiler. And also this panel is carbon fiber. It looks wicked. Interior completely redone as well. We've got the TR Lane rollover bar, the TR Lane sidebars. We've got a new head unit. A lot of money has been thrown at this car. And the question that I get asked a lot, more than anything, is, Alex, how tall are you? 5'7", first thing in the morning. The second most asked question is, how much does all of this cost? So we'll probably move on from this, right? Should we, should we leave it? It's about 25,000 pounds. But I didn't buy Phil with the intention of sticking a V6 in, so let's rewind a little bit and go back to the beginning. The story began back in 2014 when I paid £1,150 for this little Mark 1 MX-5. Bargain, so I thought, because it was clean, unmodified and didn't have any rust. I immediately fell in love with the car and because I'm a fan of Phil Collins, the name Phil was given to my brand new red sports car. Shortly after buying Phil, the urge to mod took over. And after a conversation with the guys at Moss Europe, the decision was made to get cracking. Starting with the basics like a performance exhaust and cold air intake, before the inevitable happened when I realised how badly rusted the car was. It was so bad in fact that owner Nick of MX-5 specialist Scuzzle Motorsport described it as uneconomical to repair. But this wasn't any MX-5, this was Phil. So two weeks of work and a lot of swearing by Nick gave Phil a new lease of life in the form of a Rust Elite. Next, it was back to Moss where we installed h &R coilovers and a TR Lane rollover bar and sidebars to make Phil track ready. And these modifications were all well and good, but I needed more power. So I thought, hey, Let's install a turbo. And that's exactly what we did. Gareth and I, with more help from the Scuzzle Boys, did a live installation of Phil's TDO4 at Autosport International at the NEC in Birmingham. And as you can see, I liked it quite a lot. <laughs> yeah! And now I'd like to talk about this week's sponsor, Emanuel Online. Emanuel Online is an industry standard online archive of vehicle workshop manuals, all available to download or for USB. Users get instant guidance on navigating issues as big as an engine overhaul to a quick oil change. To prove just how good it is, Jack and I are going to swap out a broken alternator on his lovely looking MX-5 using Emanuel Online. First things first, let's find the car. And there you have it, job done. The great thing is, is that you can download both repair and service manuals, which means that your initial $20 for e-manual can prevent you from spending thousands in the future because prevention is better than cure. Jack, you are wise beyond your years, my son. Anyway, visit emanualonline.com and use code CT20 for 20% off your very own manual. And now, back to the film. Nice. Film. Nice, yeah, yeah. I like that. Film, film. That's good. Film. I got it. Back to it. Yeah. With the increase in power, the next upgrades were a performance clutch and LSD, which really livened things up and meant we could celebrate our 1 million subscriber milestone in style. Yeah. <laughs> 
With Phil now nearing completion, it was time for me to fulfill a dream. To drive my very own car on the Nürburgring, which went really well. Until it stopped going well the next day. Phil's had enough. What, he's not starting? No, Phil's, Phil's just leaking loads of oil. Really? Oh, oh no! <laughs> Cheers, old friend. We eventually rescued Phil through a charitable campaign that we called hashtag Save Phil, set up by CT friends Matt and Nico. We got Phil home, fixed the oil leak, but then things were never the same and reliability, unfortunately, went out the window. And then the inevitable happened. Low oil pressure while driving killed the engine and Phil went into hibernation for a few months. Uh, just started Phil up. He started a little bit rough and then I gave him a few revs. And then a weird noise happened and then Phil cut out. So I'm gonna try and start him one more time. What's the worst that can happen? That's just a starter motor. Phil, ladies and gentlemen, is officially dead. And then I met a guy called Bruce who had a company called Rocketeer. He told me about his MX-5 that he'd fitted a V6 into and asked if I wanted to drive it. Naturally, I said yes, and before I knew it, I was behind the wheel of his car, making noises only reserved for porn movies. Oh! oh. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Oh. yeah! Spank me! And that's when it hit me. Phil needed a V6 come hell or high water. But as is the case with most project cars, what I wanted and what I could afford weren't aligned. So a further six months later, I bought a replacement 1.8 engine for £100 and installed it with Gareth on my driveway. It's not raining though. It will. I pray it rains. <laughs> One day. <laughs> uh, that's upside down. I'm curious, Gareth, why you donate so much of your time to this. I'm, I'm curious this. as well. <laughs> There's no rocks or stones in here, is there? We'll find out. Yeah. Oh, 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 quiet! Oh, 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 yes! With Phil running pretty well and another year passing, the V6 bug hadn't left my body. So after a few conversations with Bruce from Rocketeer, I made the decision and pulled the trigger by buying my very own Rocketeer kit. And then I called Gareth because no way in f would I be doing this myself. Hello, we're in. Nice. You beauty. Ah, oh, balls. Ow, f you. F***ing piece of sh sticks. Oh, sh Such a you PPF. Look, this is your starring moment. This is my dog, Maisie. Uh, I thought I'd introduce her to Project MX5. Good job. Phil and Maisie, they're going to have a wonderful relationship. Ah, you oh, got, got the meat. Since the installation and following a few teething problems, a lot has been done to fill, including a Wrench Studios respray. new interior, carbon Miata, carbon fibre, and I'm now at a stage where I can say that Phil is finally finished. Although we all know that I'm lying because no project car is ever really finished, is it? Oh. So now here we are, Phil is out on the open road with a V6 and a glorious soundtrack. It's every bit as awesome as I was hoping. The noise, the acceleration, the power, and most crucially, the torque. It just means that I don't have to work the gearbox as much, which in an MX-5 is actually a fun thing, but 
when you get to my age, it's quite nice just to relax a little bit. Every time I get inside Phil, I'm happy. Got a massive smile on my face. The feeling it gives me is just awesome. And everyone looks at Phil. This morning, for example, when I was filling up, the lady behind the counter asked me what the car was. She asked me how many seats it had. She asked me what it was like to drive. She had no interest in cars, but she wanted to know about Phil. And that tells you a lot because it's the car that gets everyone excited. <laughs> this never gets old. And the great thing as well, I can park Phil up for three months and then just, he starts on the button. There are no reliability issues. The engine is relatively understressed in this car and I think it is the perfect recipe now. Big engine in the front, rear wheel drive, nice chassis, lightweight, two seats and looks to die for and a noise that never gets old. <laughs> so how different is Phil these days? To find out, I thought we'd do a couple of comparisons, starting with a dyno, because as you may remember, Phil used to be pretty unremarkable. So I can officially tell people my MX-5 is banging out 113.3. So five years on, let's head back to Surrey Rolling Road and see what we're working with. So Charlie, can you believe five years on, I'm back here with Phil. You've lost about five stone. I look about 10 years older. Now we've got a V6. I've told you what I'm hoping for about 260, at which point you had a bit of a face on. Uh, tell me why. Well, I don't know, Alex, but knowing you, it's probably f Cool. Let's, um, let's do the dyno. It's not f Yeah, it's all right. We had 100 foot-pounds of torque with the old engine, and we've now got 225. So it's 125 foot-pounds. Uh, we had 113 horsepower in the old engine, and we've now got 253. Um, so we've got uh, 140 more horsepower. That's quite, a, quite an increase. It is quite an increase. Um, the fueling's not on this graph, but it is absolutely perfect. Um, uh, and it runs very nicely. Jobs are good. And Jobs are good. It's a little bit cramped inside, Phil. Yeah. And that's the first and last time I'm ever going to say that. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, always a pleasure to see you and spend time with you. So what does 250 horsepower mean in terms of performance? Well, many of you may remember that I took Phil to Santa Pod to test his quarter mile time, where the result was a miserable 17.6 seconds. But how about nowadays? To find out, I took Matt from CarWow up on his request to drag race his supercharged MX-5 against my V6 MX-5, which you can see here. Let's race. Come on, Phil. Come on, Phil. Ooh. Better start. close. Now he's going. Oh, bugger! Bye-bye! That was super close. Oh, no. Phil for the win. Oh, Phil, I love you so much! Oh, the glory! That was fantastic! As you've probably guessed, Phil's considerably faster than before, getting off the line well, smashing through the revs and crossing the quarter mile in 13.2 seconds, versus Matt's supercharged MX-5 time of 13.8 seconds. Compared to Phil's original time, this new quarter mile benchmark is 4.4 seconds quicker than before. Happy days. So, Phil's pretty quick in a straight line now, but how about on track? Well, because the Nürburgring is a curse for Phil, I decided to take him to a track closer to home. You know, in case the engine blew up again. So, here's how that went. Right, so here we are back in Phil on Curva Sprint Circuit. I thought it'd be a nice opportunity just to go smash Phil around and see what the V6 can really do. What do you say we just go and have a bit of fun because ultimately that's what this car's about. So, here we go. <laughs> In a 
the wheel spin. Listen to that. I love just pulling away from lights and just seeing the looks on people's faces. It's like, what? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> oh, yes. Right, here we go. Unofficial lap time in Phil. Okay, three. Good start. Happy with that. Jesus. Come on, Phil. Wild. That was very wild. Oh, a lot of fun though. I don't think I want to do that again because I've heard some scraping in the back there. And also, this is Phil. This is my Phil. I love Phil. Sorry, Phil. I won't do that again, mate. All right. You're right. 36.78. 36 points. All right. Isn't yeah, it? I think that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Yeah. Do you want to do one more? No, I'm good. Genuinely. Jack. It's up to him. It's his car. Oh, yeah, come no, on. Jack. I did. I did hear some bad scraping going on at the back. What was it? 36 something. 36.78. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go see what that compares to. As it happens, that 36.78 second lap is slightly quicker than the 36.92 I managed in my old E36 M3 Evo a couple of years ago, and also beats the 36.99 time of the Mini Cooper S, a car you'll have seen on the channel recently. So for an old man with only one real flying lap to prove himself, Phil certainly got lead in the pencil. So it's clear to see that I bloody love Phil, but I wondered what would the original designer of this car make of it. So I called up with the legend that is Tom Matano. Before we do anything, I just need to hug you. <laughs> oh, you. it feels so good. This is my Mazda MX-5. It's been uh, many years in the making. What are your first impressions? It's beautifully put together. Really? Yeah. The, you haven't the... seen any of the videos because it wasn't beautifully put together, <laughs> I can assure you. Ah, oh, balls. Ow, f you. F***ing piece of shit. If you had to pick one thing from the uh, Mark 1 MX-5 that's your favourite, what is that one standout feature for you? The balance. The first prototype we got and I drove it, this can be true, you know? <laughs> like everything we asked for came out better than we thought it would. In the heart of Phil is now a 3-litre Jaguar V6. What are your emotions to that? Purist it's not, but as an overall balance, if it's met, the weight distribution and all, I think it's a good addition to it. If you'll let me, I'd love to take you out for a quick drive. You sure, that? Yeah, why not? Well, I wanted to put the smiley sign on this one. On the uh, that switch, headlights. yeah. So like each Miata comes in to hit the smiley button. Oh, that's amazing. But I didn't have enough space to put the cover over it. Ooh. Yeah, that's a really good kick, huh? <laughs> Originally, I wanted to have that turn indicator to be the headlamp but technology wasn't there. Inevitably, you have to do a pop-up. Had there been the technology at the time, this car would not have come with pop-up headlights. Wouldn't. And arguably, pop-up headlights are one of the but most you defining know, features. Yeah, but I must say though, I went to Japan to see the progress of the final design, and I saw just a straight box. So I, I couldn't stand it. You know, we put that much char character on the exterior. So I, got the clay tool and shape, you know, the, as it is now, the little curvature around yeah. the round headlamp. So this is the thing. When we were originally designing it, right? I said to engineering, is there any way we can program that little leak from the oil pan randomly? But it has to be on Friday night. So the Saturday morning, you guys go into the garage and say, oh, I got to work on a car. Yeah. So you can have an excuse to work all Saturday or Sunday. Engineers said, what in the hell you you talk about that? <laughs> we don't build cars like that. I said, no, no, you don't understand the culture. That's like, 
MX-5 amplified. <laughs> yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure, Tom. Thanks for your time. And, uh, well, thank you. Yeah, again, here we are. This is all because of you and your team. I've been on one hell of a journey with Phil and have been humbled by all of the messages of support and all of the renders and sketches that you guys have sent me. This car has also inspired many of you to buy your very own project cars, so from me, that's a win. Yes! But this little red car is far more important than that, because I've received messages from many of you telling me that the Phil series helped them get out of depression and on the road to recovery. And then I met a guy called Cameron, whose first words to me were, thank you. When I asked why, he told me that he was fighting a losing battle with mental health and that most of his time was spent wondering why he was still here, until he saw a video of Phil. Season 1, episode 12 made him watch the entire first and second series, which is what inspired him to buy his very own MX-5. And that's when things changed for the better. When he spoke to me, he said, I can honestly say it has saved my life. It brought me joy and gave me a reason to keep going. So before Phil and I say our final goodbyes, I hope that watching this series has helped anyone who struggle forget about the bad stuff and focus on the good. Like MX-5s, unless they've been really rusty piles of shit like Phil. For now though, I want to say a massive thank you for sticking with Phil and I for all of these years. I really hope that he was worth the wait.